breakfast this morning. Hadn't had time to do it yet. Been busy with chores and things. Mayor was folding. Jay's hadn't had time, but he was going to take him back. He told me so. No, no, no. Don't get yourself all upset, Mabel. I heard him quarreling out and back, piping Jay's. I didn't think nothing of it. Pipe's always quarreling with everybody. You know that. Yeah, I know. And the next thing I knew, I heard a shot. I thought Pipe was just trying to scare Jace. Until I... I saw Jace fall down. Hmm. Pipe right off toward his own place? No. Toward the canyon. Over that way. Hmm. I remember asking myself why his pipe heading toward the canyon. His ranch is the other way. It just hadn't dawned on me yet. What he'd done, that he was running away. Yes. Well, it's turning chilly. You better go inside now, Mabel. Yeah? Well, Doc Anderson is sending somebody out to pick supper and stay with you tonight. He'll find pipe, Sheriff. He'll find him. Bring him back. Sure, sure I'll find him. You want me to help you up? No, I, I can manage. Here, now, here we are. That's there. I, I'm pleased to have met you, Mr. Ponsett. Thank you, ma'am. I've heard of you, haven't I? He's the six shooter, Mabel. Six shooter? Mm-hmm. Oh, of course, that's why. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Ponsett. I'm glad you're going with the sheriff. I wouldn't want Pat to kill somebody else. Even if he wasn't punished for what he did to Jake. I wouldn't want there to be another killing. I'm glad you're going with the sheriff. Well, looks like I've got me a deputy after all. Well, Buzz was willing to come. Hack, he wanted to. I'd rather have you, Britt. Let's go. <laughs> Well, we picked up Pipe Clamper's trail about sundown. At least it was the only fresh trail heading toward the canyon, so we figured Pipe had made it. The next couple of hours was pretty dark, so we had to move slow, keeping our eyes glued to the ground. Then along about 8 o'clock, the moon came out, and we could make better time. We were in the canyon now. The way the hoof marks were spaced, we could tell that Pipe's horse was getting tired, and Pipe had to be forced to ride a little easier. Looks like we might be gaining on him, Britt. Yeah... Yeah. Any place around here he could hole up? An old trading post about a mile ahead. Been deserted since the Indians moved south. He could be there. Uh-huh. Uh, Britt. Yeah? Maybe... Maybe you think it's funny I wanted you to go along with me tonight, but... Well, it's not that I couldn't bring Pipe Clamper in alone, but there's more to it than that. It's when we get back to town. That's when I'll need you. Oh? Yeah, you see, Jason Norton was a well-liked man. He lived in Quiet City, oh, well, practically from the very beginning. Everybody knew him. Everybody liked him. Uh-huh. Yeah. But nobody has any use for Pipe Clamper. Like I told you, some fellows are just mean. And Pipe's one of them. Anyway, what I'm getting at is this. Jace has a brother, Abe Norton. And he'll be fighting mad when he finds out what happened today. He'll be killing mad. And the whole town will go along with him. Mm-hmm. You mean they might try and lynch Pipe? Huh? They'll try. Well, you can't be certain of that, Hank. I know the town, Brit. There hasn't been any trouble for two years. And that's a long time. A lot of pressure builds up in two years. Now, Jace's murder, that'll set folks off. Uh, I hope you'll be willing to give me a hand. Well, you know I'll do what I can, Hank. It's him, Brit. It's up there behind the tree. Well, the bullet smashed into Hank's leg and tore him right out of the saddle. I dived off Scar and took cover behind a rock. There was a clump of trees hanging to the side of the canyon about a hundred yards ahead. I could make out something that looked like a building with a carved totem pole out in front of it. I figured that was the trading post Heck had been telling us about. But the shots weren't coming from inside. Whoever was firing was using the Indian post for a shield. You all right, Heck? It's it's just my leg, Britt. Afraid I can't move it, though. I'll get over to you. No, no. You stay where you are. I'm... I'm... I'm out of his range. 
There's a tree between me and him. But, uh, but it looks like you'll have to take him, Britt. I said I wouldn't need you till we got back to town, but it looks like... Look, it sounded like Heck had passed out. I raised my head up to the edge of the boulder. When I couldn't see Heck, I, there was a great big fir tree right in front of him. Well, that meant Pipe Clamper couldn't see him either. <coughs> hey, he sure could see me, though. That moonlight was just pouring down on that rock where I was hiding, and if I so much as moved, I was right in plain sight. I, I waited a couple of minutes. I hadn't done any firing yet. Maybe he'd think I was hit. Maybe he'd come over after me. Yeah, yeah, that was my best chance. I listened hard. I couldn't hear anything. He was still behind that totem pole, still playing it safe. And as long as the moon kept me pinpointed, I... Oh. I looked up in the sky just in time to see a great big cloud float toward the orange circle over my head. A big white cloud. Big enough to give me a minute of dark. It was still moving, sweeping across the stars now. And then it hit the edge of the moon. I swung out from behind the rock and I headed toward the trees between me and the trading post. Pipe Hoare heard me all right. Not in time, though. Not until I was up beside one of the trees, about 30 yards from where he was waiting. And the sky was beginning to whiten up now and I saw Pipe's arm inching around the edge of the totem pole. I knew a slug in his arm wasn't going to be enough. Pushed up on my haunches and I ran forward. He raised his gun, ready to get off another shot. I twisted one side and let fire. His shot was close, but he missed me. Uh, well, I hadn't done much better. So I, I crawled along, keeping myself as flat as I could, moving real slow. Not more than a foot every two or three minutes, and straining my ears, trying to hear him breathe. He was only about ten feet away now. And there weren't any more trees between us, just open space. I... I pressed my belly down into the dirt. My gun just poking up just an inch or so. Just enough so that... And then I saw his gun. A little beam of moonlight bounced off the barrel. And I saw the shadow of his head easing across the ground beside that totem pole... Drop it, Pipe. What? Now get in your feet. He stood up. And his face came into the moonlight and he took a step forward. And then his left hand jerked out toward me. <laughs> My bullet hit his shoulder and spun him around and he crashed into the totem pole. And for a second, I thought it was going to topple over with him, but it held firm. <laughs> Morning, Hank. Morning. Uh, it's almost noon, as a matter of fact. Doc Anderson said you ought to be coming too about now. Oh, my my leg. Oh, no, it's going to be all right. It'll be all right. Doc says for you just not to fuss about it. It'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for for bringing me home, Britt. I don't know how you manage, but they... oh, Pa, I feel it. Fine, Buzz. Just just first rate. I see you didn't leave town. Nope, nope, didn't leave. Well, I guess maybe what Pipe done wasn't all of the bad. Not if it brung you to your senses. It's something, anyhow. You killed him, huh, Britt? No, 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 he's kind of worse for wear, but he'll be patched up in time for a trial. Mm. Well, where is he? The doc's looking after him. You mean he ain't in jail? You mean nobody's guarding but Doc Anderson? Well, uh, we weren't very worried about him running off. That ain't what I'm talking about. Britt, I told you what had happened. I told you what Jace Norton's brother would do. Oh, all that. Well, you see, Heck, Abe Norton's already been around. He, he's gone back to his ranch now. Gone back? Mm-hmm. Well, you see, folks just wouldn't pay any attention to him. He's... Oh, sure, they all feel real bad about Jace, like you said they would, and they all think that Pipe deserves a hanging, but... They're pretty convinced that's what the judge will give them. The judge? But 
Oh, but that don't make sense. Well, that's the truth. Well, everybody's satisfied that there'll be a, a fair trial and that Pipe will get what's coming to him. Why? Why, in the old days, they wouldn't have stood still for... for not for five minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess these aren't the old days. Then... Then Buzz was right. That talk about quiet city being civilized? <laughs> don't fret yourself about it now, Pa. Oh, it, it just don't seem possible. This ain't the same town. These folks ain't the same. Well, what happened to him, Brett? Oh, I don't know. I guess maybe a town grows up just like a person, Hank. And, uh... And I guess maybe you had something to do with it, too. Me? Mm-hmm. You see, somebody taught him to respect the law and to try to live up to it. And if it wasn't you, I sure don't know who it was. Well, Buzz stayed around Quiet City until Heck was on his feet again. And then Heck, Heck himself sent the boy east to college. That was all, let's see, three, four years ago, yeah. The last time I was through that way, Buzz had come home. You see... Buzz was running for county attorney. <laughs> yes, uh, and the way Heck was managing his campaign, well, if that election didn't turn out to be a landslide, I sure missed my guess. Until recent years, misconceptions prompted many to feel that a diagnosis of heart disease was a death sentence. But today, thanks to medical science and the educational work of your heart association, we are learning that most people with heart disease can work and lead happy lives. But the real answer to heart disease lies in heart research and community heart programs, which can be expanded through your continued support of the Heart Fund. This is not only Valentine's Day, but it's Heart Sunday. So make it a point to give to your local heart association now. And remember, when you help your heart fund, you help your heart. The Sick Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burke and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Robert Griffin, Lamont Johnson, and Will Wright. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Oh, by the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the Six Shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Listen to Jan Murray in Sunday at Home on the NBC Radio Network.